from yesterday. We had some pretty heavy rain about the same time, but the MCG surface Robo looks pretty good. Yes, and uh, there was a lot of conjecture about who would pick up Gary Ablett, but it looks like it might be Bernard Tui down here yes. in front of us, Ross. Could be, yes, with Wallace picking up Riccardi. First quarter of the qualifying final, Geelong and Footscray, the Bulldogs chasing their first premiership since 1954. Knock away to Geelong by Barnes. Ball, says the crowd, first free kick of the game. We go to Stoneham, taken too high, Pete. Free kick was fourth. Barry Stoneham kicks up towards the Jollymont end. Hocking, almost a clean possession, couldn't take it. Campbell leaves it for Stanfield. Kick partially smothered off the boot as it comes up towards midfield again. Coleman must have been taken high, was taken high. He got it right on the nose, Glenn Coleman, and he'll take the free kick for Footscray. Coleman, a real journeyman in, journeyman in football terms, kicks up towards the edge of the square. And the umpires have found another free kick. This time it's going to Simpson. And he got it for a push in the back. Over to one of the two Hockings in the Geelong 20 now. Gary Hocking gives it back to Simpson. No, he doesn't. He gives it to uh, John Barnes. Barnes's kick up towards half forward. Marking contest out there. Knocked away by Reynolds. Not very far. A little back kick. A slap forward. Chance for Geelong's first goal. That came up from Mansfield, but he's kicked only one behind. So the first score of the game coming up at the minute and a half mark of the first quarter. And it goes to the Cats. Interchange for both teams for Geelong, Miles and Wills. And for Footscray, Corker and, and Collingham. Reynolds kicks it to the near side. The bounce is not all that kind for Baxter. He's nearly run down by Brownless, but he gets the kick away. Up to right half forward, where the mark is taken for Footscray by Justin Charles. Charles, who has replaced Scott Wine in the Footscray side. He's kicked the centre half forward. Couch gives it away to Royal. Royal's kick to a vacant left forward pocket. Kellett loves to run with the football. Nigel Kellett gets past Brown. Goes for goal. Nigel Kellett hooks the kick. And it's through for a behind to Footscray. A few nerves, Ross. Well, yes, and that handball coming from Paul Couch. He's looking for Buse back in the middle of the ground. It was intercepted by Royal. It was an unusual mistake there, I thought, from a, a very experienced player. Should have come the boundary line. Barnes makes the lead. Hinkley kicks in. No mark taken. Sweeping hand pass. Comes out the direction of Riccardi. Kicks up towards half forward. Goes straight down the centre of the ground. Tui missed the mark and then got taken high without the ball. And Bernard Tui will take the free kick at centre half back for the Bulldogs. Bernard Tui playing against one of his former sides. And the other one, of course, the Sydney Swans. Be keen to do well here today. Bernard Tui. Chance for Simpson again. A little chip shot. Over to Victorian representative Andrew Buse. Kicks up towards Hocking. at Gary Hocking at midfield. So like yesterday, scoring difficult in the first few minutes. Well, gee, was that in the push in the back of Brownless? Yeah, definitely. 50 metres, that should be too. Baxter kicked it away. Yes, yeah, so what happened yesterday in the first part of the game too, Robbo, where free kick was given and I think it was Robert Harvey played on and 50 metres came. So here's the push in the back. Definite free kick there, definitely to Brownless and Gee, he play continued about, on he just about kicked this Ross wouldn't he oh, one of the few players in fact he'd kicked that pretty easily Pete Bill Brownless who's been in great form lately distance is not a problem accuracy is neither first goal to Geelong oh, great kick by Brownless oh, you, no. one, of the, one of those players you can back for distance certainly from that area and that's he's a sort of player Robbo too if he starts with that sort of confidence in the first few minutes of the game you can expect a lot from him and there's a player who's just delivering the ball to him in hocking gary who's such an important player for geelong midfield and even more so today in the absence of bearstone a very good player billy brownless and geelong get the first goal of the game big emphasis on the center bounces and barnes is jumping beautifully at the moment couch has been productive this is picked off by Hawkins. Hawkins, left foot kick up towards the 50 metre line. Royal leads Malakalis. That could nearly have been a free yes, kick there mate. to Royal. It was. And Brian Royal with his second touch of the game. But he's very deep at left half forward for the Bulldogs. Wonderful player, Brian Royal for the Footscray Football Club. Short pass. And it's not bad either. On oh, it slips through Grant's hands. Here's Liberatore. Handball, Atkins. Steve Hockey, Atkins again, no Grant, can't get through. Handball wider still, McPherson caught by Riccardi. 
Ball goes to ground. Away go the Cats. Barnes receiving from Handley. In turn over the top to Gary Hockey. Gary Hockey's kick. He centers it. In towards half forward. No mark taken. Chance for Coleman. Over the shoulder, was it? Holding on. Holding on, says the umpire. So the free kick will go to Stoneham. And that's his second free kick of the game. Barry Stoneham. Well, maybe too far out to score. If Bill Brown has had it, you'd say he just about get the distance. Any breeze is behind him. Gee, he's given it a decent old roost. Look at that. And one behind. Says the goal umpire. Kicked by Barry Stoneham. His first score of the afternoon. Bench for the Cats. Keenan Reynolds to kick in. He's named as a possible interchange player. Lined up in the 18. Oh, good mark. Taken by Matthew Mansfield. Two Mansfields out there today. Matthew and Michael on the opposite sides. Charles, he pushing the back as well. Mark or whatever. Umpire says play on. Royal on a lead and marks. And that's what they've got to do. They've got to move the ball on quickly. They can't afford to be stationary in their movements and just playing on from there. Liberatory's kick was a beauty. Three touches now to Brian Royal. He was named as a possible interchange player. I think that's a bit of a joke. He'd be in my best 18 for Footscray, but the veteran lines up for possibly Footscray's first goal. Inside 50, kicked from about 40 metres. Looks good. A goal. The Bulldogs hit back. Yes, and he's been such a key, has Brian Rule coming through. That's his 41st goal for the season. And he, along with Delray Hawkins and Chris Grant, they just form a very dangerous forward line with the hard-working Glenn Coleman at centre-half forward. But there's a work out of the centre. Charles presented himself quickly off to Liberatore, and he found Royal with a lovely kick. I think Terry, uh, not Terry Wheeler, Malcolm Blight's made a change already there. He's got Steve Hocking back on Brian Royal. Ruck contest. One point, the free advantage kick. for Geelong. A free kick at the centre bounce. Charles away to Baxter. Baxter's little kick is too far. The mark is taken by McGrath at right half back for Geelong. Short pass into the centre. Buse. Always a busy player, Andrew Buse. Lovely long kick to half forward. Oh, what a great mark, Stoneham. Jared Healy said on Sports World this morning, possibly one of the best players in the competition. There's no doubt that he's one of the best, but uh, Ross? Well, look, he's got everything, Robbo. He's got such an athletic ability as a runner. He's tall, can do everything. Very strong, Stoneham. He kicks for goal and he makes no mistake. First goal to Stoneham, and Geelong have kicked their second. They're 2-2-14, Footscray a 1-1-7. Yes, and if these conditions uh, continue, we could see a fairly high-scoring game because it's going nip and tuck at the moment, and with the key forwards getting into the game, here we see Stoneham just taking one of those typical marks of his coming from the side with his height and strength, and he's such a wonderful finisher too. Well played. Looks like Royce Hart, the way he took that one. Seven points the difference after Barry Stoneham's mark and goal. 14 plays seven, 18 and a half minutes left in the first quarter. It's the Cats doing it well. Atkins, he must fire a Footscrays to do well here this afternoon. Coleman, a fumble. Crucial to get it out of the centre. Scott fumbles likewise. Mansfield dives on top of it. And temper's becoming a little bit frayed. Libba, the last to get up. Isn't he always? Gee, that's an anxious-looking Footscray bench. Barking instructions. Is the phone broken there? as it was, I think, at uh, Waverley yesterday. Coleman, a quick kick out of the centre, up towards Kellett, who loves to run, but he can't this time. He has to go back to take his kick. A nine-iron shot. Atkins. And as I mentioned, only 30 seconds back, if he fires, Footscray will be in with a real chance. Against Carlton, he was well down, a match in which the colours of Footscray were lowered. So Atkins, a chance for his first goal, and Footscray second. Right on 50. Gee, not a good kick. It's coming back a little, but not enough for a score. And out of bounds. Throw in left forward pocket for Footscray. Yes, that's the change that was made, Robert. You're quite right there. Hocking now, picking up Royal with Malik Kellis at the moment, just running with Atkins. Charles and Barnes. Barnes wins it, not decisively. Hocking away from defence. A good little chip shot. Finds Peter Riccardi. 
Riccardi from his own defensive 50 metre line kicks downfield. Oh, Geelong have got the numbers at the fall of the ball. Views, the pass is too short. Brownless, shot for goal by Brownless. He hooks it too far, you wouldn't believe it. One one he's kicked. Well, it was a reasonably difficult shot. And to hook it even further past the, uh, the goals, the Footscray players on the interchange bench warming up, that's uh, Corcoran and Kolonyuk. Brownless misses, and the kick-in is done by Reynolds. Keenan Reynolds <coughs> kicking in from full-back. Hickbot was there, the redhead, playing only his second game. It's a free kick, Pete, being paid for pushing the back. He's and going to Hickmott. Under-19, best and fairest last year, coming from Horsham. Not much of him. What a plus it is. He only played his first game That's a week right, or so ago, week. and yeah. now he's in the finals. Kicks to the front of goal. Brownless the target. Campbell, good punch. Liberatore looking for assistance. Finds it in the person of Tui. Tui kicks to the member stand side. Well good played. mark taken by Super. That's McPherson. McPherson's kicked the centre wing. One on one duel. Well, oh, that, that was end critical. From, uh, John Barnes. Gee, that was critical. If he hadn't got the punch away there, Charles had Baxter running alongside and they could have opened it right up. It's a boundary throw in centre wing. 16 minutes left in the first quarter. Coleman looking for front position in fact they all missed it Baxter with the long sleeves today one of the real stoppers looks for Justin Charles did he keep it in I don't think he did and he's out and we collect a couple of photographers down there so it will be a throw in about 50 meters from goal and Justin Charles has another string to his bow Peter he's one of the uh, very promising baseballers in uh, Victoria so Big challenge for him, Aussie rules football and baseball, but at the moment, he's got the job in front of him. Oh, working hard in the ruck. There's Atkins taken too high. And Simon Atkins has the free kick about 40 metres from goal. And importantly for him, he's about eight or nine metres closer than yes, his previous right. shot. Because his last kick, he just pushed the ball to the inside of his boot, which then forced the ball to go left. Well, I think he'll be a little bit more confident with this one. And he does the job nicely. Simon Atkins. Similar trajectory, though. It went left and then came back. And then seemed to, well, breeze, I guess. Yes, and just, just before he took that kick too, Robbo, he just sort of said to himself, now run on a straight line and drop the ball straighter than he did on the previous occasion. And that's exactly what he did. And the result was there. Here's the free kick. McGrath, the tackler. Just the right hand coming up underneath the chin of Atkins. Good decision. Simon Atkins getting Footscray's second goal. There's only two points the difference. 15 minutes left in the first quarter. Atkins again, a quick kick out of the centre from a standing start on the 50 metre line. You could almost say that was a push in the back. Royal battling with Stephen Hocking. And the old stage he gets up. No free kick. I don't think he'd be impressed with the old business. 30 years <laughs> of age, he's old. <laughs> In football terminology, I think I'm correct. Here he goes again. Gee, he's had about five touches now. Kicks up towards full forward. No mark taken. Chance for McPherson. Tries to brush one tackle. The hand pass inboard. The Delray is effective. Over his shoulder, Danny's kick registered only one behind. Well, Peter, if you had to give him the handball in the first instance to uh, Del Rey, who was alongside him, and in his vision, rather than running away from goal toward the boundary, and then attempting another handball whilst under pressure, would have been a different result. Ken Hinkley, who's been in the wars of late. Gee, that's a good kick. Charles getting front position. Good mark, too tall for Brown. So Justin Charles taking on the ruck mantle so far effectively, and a pretty good sort of a kick. He's found Cavett. Cavett has to go back for his kick. Long boot should land it almost in the kickoff area. Adlett flies, couldn't take the mark. Tries to scoop it out, does so, but the whistle's already gone. It'll be a bounce. And if Gary Ablett's down there in the last line of defence, Ross, so uh, he's having a run on the ball. Yeah. Bounce about 15 metres from the Footscray goal. Chance now for Del Rey. Shrugs the tackle. Too high. Well, when you're trying to get a run up, that, that's right. Look, agree. so absolutely important 20 metres from goal. But Atkins Gray now have a chance to kick a goal. Wasn't the Atkins free kick from a similar? No, Atkins actually was standing and McGrath came from behind. But this occasion, Delray's trying to duck to get out of it. And play on. 
Well, they did almost put a ping for holding the ball. Mm. Del Rey to shoot for goal from 20 metres out and put Footscray in front. And he kicks the goal. Del Rey's first. The boos are from the Geelong fans. 13 minutes left. Footscray lead by five points. Yes, and that's uh, talking about Gary Ablett being down in the defensive area there. He's changing with uh, Couch off a half forward flank at the moment. See this once again. He's held the ball for had a chance to get rid of them. Duck to try and avoid the players. Play on. So back to the centre. Footscray in front. Five points the difference. 13 minutes left in the first quarter. The bounce goes to Long's way. Actually knocked down by Scott. Adler, was he taken high? He'll get the free kick. Taken high by Liberatore. If physically that's at all possible. Straight down the centre corridor. Stone him up one-handed. Hickbot, a knock on. Gary Hocking. Quick to pounce on the ball. Long shot at goal. Will register a behind, I feel. Kicked by the Geelong Ruck Rover. Gary Hocking, his first score of the afternoon. And so the Cats reduce the margin to four points as Reynolds kicks in. Well bandaged, like a thoroughbred. This favours the member side slightly. Glenn Coleman has the height, has the front position and runs on again basically down the center good race for the ball charles oh, turns like a rover superbly done grant the two number 29s but it's grant in front and takes the mark in front of ken hinckley tips it in short oh kellett stood his ground well it's a terrific effort there but the two big fellows there dominating good kick in and then coleman taking the mark i thought he played on and ran into trouble but he got got away with it but his kick to find charles is terrific your heart was in your mouth when Glenn Coleman oh, played on at centre half back. Me. I think some of his teammates' <laughs> hearts were as well. Kellett, pretty acute angle, doesn't make any difference. It's a goal. So Kellett gets his first. He's kicked one-one so far out of Footscray's tally of four-two. They lead by ten points. It's great to see terrific clean passages of football there. Players handballing and balling without fumbles in these conditions here. Charles just did that very well, and then his kick. And a follow-up there from Grant and then Kellett, under a bit of pressure, did it very, very well. A good effort there by Nigel Kellett. Barnes gets the tap down. Ablett tries to make a path there for Buse. Eventually, Buse does well, but the hand pass is erratic. Mansfield, dispossessed by Liberatore, kicked away by Reynolds, back towards the wing, the mark is taken by Kellett, oh. could have nearly been penalised there, now he's asked to play on, and he kicks with the left foot, in towards half forward, Grant, wonderful composure to just keep his footing, and he gets around onto the right foot, and kicks at the backstop, puts Gray, absolutely killing Geelong at the moment. Yes, that's brilliant from Chris Grant, fantastic play. Two good passes in the last minute he's dished out. Darren Baxter kicking from about 47 metres and gets under it a little bit. Lobs it right in the goal square. That's a mark. Certain mark for Charles. There's a lot of experience at full forward in the reserves, Justin Charles. Not only just having a run on the ball, but see what a confidence booster this will be too. In the middle of a pack there with Barnes trying to spoil from behind. Terrific grab. Now, Justin Charles, 21 years of age, just a youngster. Kicks for goal and puts it straight through the centre and the arms in the air. The bullies are fire here at the MCG. They've kicked 5-2, Geelong a 2-4. Yes, and he's a very exuberant type of player and he and Coleman have interchanged a little bit on the ball. And here, see the mark again, full marks to Justin Charles. He's trying to grab his spot and hold on to it. So Footscray setting the pace early in the opening quarter. Ten minutes left. Bounce favours uh, Charles. Taps it out, tries to find Liberatore. He's got good backup support from Wallace. Hawkins, his first effective touch. Hawkins out towards an open Footscray right half forward line. They don't have the numbers though, it's Geelong. Hinkley. Gee, ordinary sort of a kick. Not too many options open for him. Couch 
Gets it back to McGrath. McGrath from left centre wing. Kicks to left half forward. I was going to say a marking contest, but it's no marking contest. Stanfield takes it. Could be 50. Is 50. Everything going foot sprays way at the moment. I think that was an accident. Maybe they don't count. That and that's way. where it's so so harsh, that penalty, isn't it? I mean, it's not worth 50 metres. Goodness me. As the old 15 would have been. Uh... And Stanfield's been fantastic at half back in the absence of Peter Foster. Foster played in the twos here today. You really do that much. Up towards full forward. No mark taken. Little toe poke off the ground from Charles. Good tackle by Liberatore. Tackled by Couch. Could have almost been penalised. Hocking. Gets it over to Riccardi, who was pinned, nailed. Could have got your rule. The ball spills out of bounds. Uh, great effort by the straight forward, oh, Same. Just chased and didn't want the ball to get out of their area. Footscray fans happy at the moment. Side leading 5-2 to 3-4. Chance for them again here. The ball scooped out towards the 50-metre line. Hocking. Met pretty solidly. In trouble. He's down. Hasn't moved. Now he's all right. McCarty. Away he goes. Plenty of weight being used there. Campbell leads in the race for the ball. Oh, the gloves on. He's got two jumpers as well. He's well rugged up. Here's number six. And the ball padded over the boundary line. Good safe knock down He's, there. Hocking. Hocking's gone, Pete. Shoulder, I think, definitely. That's that's the, def the great hip and shoulder from Hawkins. It's part of the game. He, immediately you saw his grab his left hand. And Billy Brownless, has he done his shoulder as well? He has had problems with that in the past. Sturdum taps down, so things aren't going Footscray's way. Baxter, Liberatore, quick hand pass. Hawkins again. And here come Footscray, the kick up towards centre wing. Cat's in a bit of trouble with uh, two players injured. Hocking replaced by Wills. And Wills immediately into the play. We'll get a kick on centre wing. He thumps it long in towards centre half forward. Brownless being attended by the physiotherapist at the back. As away goes Footscray. Mansfield, his kick up towards half forward. Grant out in front. Bulldogs can assert their authority in this five minutes with Geelong just a little in disarray. Gary Hocking to Hinkley. Hinkley at centre half back. Kicks it high. Ablett. No, he leaves it for young Hickbot, and Hickbot marks. Gives the hand pass away to Ablett. Ablett in turn, wider still. Buse, very productive from 50 metres. Buse goes long. Brownless has got it. What a great recovery by Big Billy, and he's kicked the goal. All clear. Brownless gets his second. Shoulder still doesn't look too good, Ross. No, but uh, the fact that he, he had the... The guts just to put his hands up and take that mark. It's just critical. It's like Brett in that grand final. He just had to do it for his team. He's, it, I'm sure that'll come good whilst he stays warm. But just see here. He just cops one here. There it is. Just cops it on that AC joint. He should be okay. So the Cats hit back. Ten points the difference. And the eight minutes left in the first quarter. It's certainly been an action-packed one so far. A couple of injuries to Geelong. That magnificent bump from Doug Hawkins. Hocking. Ooh, Atkins. That's got to be in danger. And Simon Atkins, not too happy about the position, tells the umpire that. Gary Hocking with the free kick at midfield. Goes in short. Mark taken by Barnes. He looked for somebody going past. The interchange player, Wills. Kicks down to the square. Brownless almost. He's kicked two goals, one already, Brownless. If they lost him, that would be a tragic blow for Geelong's chances, well, not only today, but also for the finals. He doesn't look a happy boy, Billy. We have a bounce. A chance for a Geelong goal. Stanfield knocks the ball over the boundary line. The best result the Bulldogs could have hoped for that. As we go down to Jared Healy, what's the news from the Geelong bench? Well, Stephen Hocking has got a little bit of a separation of his AC joint. It's doubtful whether he'll come back on. They're mobilising it, trying to get it going, but uh, in some doubt now. Well, that's bad luck for them. Snapshot for goal, came from Mansfield. It's a goal. So Mansfield gets his first for Geelong. He's kicked 1-1. The Cats hit back. They come to within a kick in the first quarter. Yes, and this, uh, this game's just ebbed and flowed here, and Geelong just taking over the game this last five minutes, just looking more positive. Some of their players midfield just getting hold of the footy and doing the right thing. And, Robbo, you mentioned that with, with Hocking coming on and Brownless just putting Geelong in a bit of disarray, with Wills then coming on, Malcolm Bias has been able to offset Footscray a bit because they, now they don't know who to pick up. So it's actually worked yes, reverse, isn't it? Yeah, you probably think at first that it's the, the team with the two... Yes. Injured players, but you're right there, Ross. Now it takes a bit of reconstruction from Terry Wheeler. 
So we'll have the bounce back in the centre with six and a half minutes left. Footscray lead by four points. The ball nearly won there by Atkins. He's able to tap it clear, but only as far as Hinkley. Hinkley's kick across his body. Goes back into the busy centre. Barnes and Stoneham leave it. Through comes Stanfield. Now Atkins. Ooh. A long kick by that player. Into the pocket. Grant. He is such a good player, Chris Grant. You can't keep him out of the game for the whole journey. And he's marked in that left forward pocket. It was a towering kick from Atkins. Oh, wasn't yes. It? Beautiful kick. It's important here. And Brown, Paul Brown, that is from Geelong, who has played a number of games in the forward line. Now finding himself as a defender, he certainly will have his hands full with Chris Grant. Well, Grant, the difficulty confronted Chris Grant is the angle. He's only 25 metres out. So let's see what he can do. Chance for the Bulldogs' sixth goal in the first quarter of the qualifying final. He's kicked it. Chris Grant gets his first goal. And Footscray kicked their sixth. They're 6 2, Geelong a 4 4. And Footscray have had six individual goal kickers. It just shows how even their team has been. It's indicative of their whole season. They've had contributors all over the ground. They haven't been reliant on one forward or one play to carry them through. They've just spread the workload, which is terrific. Chris Grant joining the ranks of the goal kickers. Charles, Carrot, Atkins, Delray. Grant, as I mentioned, and Brian Royal for their tally of six. Good hip and shoulder applied by Wallace. Stanfield, a quick kick out of the centre. They've been good at getting it out of the centre. Footscray so far in this quarter. And they go into attack again. Royal leaves it. Wills will take the hand pass. Started on the bench and came on. He's been on about five minutes. Haven't seen much of Adlett so far. Tui pushes him in the back. Adlett will take the free kick. He's played it for across the shoulder of the umpire indicating. Gary Ablett to the Brownlow medalist couch. Up and turned to Peter Riccardi. And Brown is yes, he's marked. And again, we would suggest distance shouldn't be a problem. Let's hope that shoulder of his is okay. Good little kick by Riccardi there. Said it again. Well, Brown is supposed to keeps going, keeps that shoulder warm. That's very important. Jeff Miles warming up. Well, that, uh, interesting to see who he replaces. What He's kick. drawn it back. It's close. Line ball looks good. The umpire says yes, it's a goal. So Brown just gets his third for the quarter. Three goals, one. And Geelong again within four points, five four to six two. Yes, and it's Paul Brown who's come off after that uh, mark from Chris Grant. And there we see it there. But Brownless in his first final last year, not his first ever, but his final for Geelong last year against St Kilda kicked eight. And he's certainly starting off in a similar vein now. Gee, you just can't afford to let Billy Brownless get the football around about 50 metres or closer. Just makes you pay for it. Couch gets the ball out of the centre. Riccardi a fraction slow. He's kicked to half forward. Gary Hockey makes a little bit of a path for Mansfield. Mansfield onto the right foot. High kick in towards full forward. Mark is taken by Crediu. And well done by Bernard too. He kept Ablett out of the action. He was running, going for a jump. Until he put his body in. Crediu's kick in turn is marked by Simpson. He plays on quickly. Kicks it a little too high for Couch. Puts Gray in trouble at centre half back. Stoneham over the top has given away a free kick. And it'll be taken for Footscray by Mansfield. Mansfield quickly kicks it a little bit too high for the forwards' chances, but Coleman does well. Nearly takes the mark, but now getting a free kick. Going to Geelong, Couch. Now that confused a few people there. It was for an open handed throw, handball, if you like, Pete. Yeah, pretty or hand pass. Darren Baxter marking contest on centre wing. That could be a free to Footscray for too high. Riccardi to couch again on the views or bad hand pass right next to the interchange area. He won't be happy with that. So a throw in will take place on centre wing. Brown sits the bench. Coleman and Barnes couch again. Riccardi a high kick that'll bring rain. Which we don't need any more of. Is it a mark or is it out of bounds? Freddie Hook has taken it. Boundary umpire gives him the thumbs up. He's going to get the kick anyway. 
kicks to half forward. Oh, well done. Good mark. Hinkley. By Ken Hinkley. Stood his ground very, very well. He does always. Cops a few occasionally. Good kick. Mansfield. Looks around for assistance. Not too much on offer for him. He'll have to go long now. Now he gives away the hand pass to Wills, who's been well useful since he came on. Adlett, sandwiched. He hasn't had much of a go so far. Gary, groundless. Tries to get it to Adlett. Can he do something? The superstar gives away the hand pass. And a quick kick, not to the advantage of Geelong. Comes from Darren, uh, from Miles it was. And Darren Baxter, one of the real stoppers in the game, takes the mark in defence and he goes to the MCG uh, member stand side wing. And it goes through the pack of players, but uh, that pack of players consisted of Steve McPherson and he's going to take the free kick just behind the wing for Footscray. Steve McPherson, over 150 games now with Footscray. He's kicking towards half forward. Charles tries to get it to Wallace. Wallace hand pass. Atkins in turn Liberatore. Liberatore from 55. Lovely little kick. Hawkins is marked in the pocket. Look out, Dougie. And just a perfect option there from Simon Atkins there. Giving you two options to give it to as a teammate. He picked Liberatore because he was a left foot on the outside of play. And he had Hawkins free as well set up. Now Hawkins, such a talented footballer really should kick this Dougie Hawkins shoots for goal it looks pretty good Hawkins kicks his first and Footscray doing very nicely in the first term of the qualifying final they lead by 10 points yes and uh, Hawkins having a bit more of a roaming role rather than just playing more station on the forward and there's that perfectly set up handball from Atkins which allowed Libertura to dispose of the ball correctly and Hawkins having a bit of an influence on the game, playing off half-back and running through the centre. 12 goals kicked in the first quarter, and Footscray is seven by seven different players. So quite an oddity. Under a minute to go in the opening term. Barnes against Charles. Ten points the difference. Barnes wins it, tries to get it to Couch. Couldn't do so. Wallace, well shepherded by Hawkins. Kicks it back over his head. Good mark taken by Tim McGrath. Time running out for scoring in the opening term, but we've seen plenty of it. They played at a pretty high stand. This is Riccardi. Riccardi from left centre wing. Spears the pass in. It's an absolute shocker. Wallace, Atkins, Liberatore, the Brownlow medalist, gets met. Partial smother out there. Wallace backs his judgment pretty well. Puts the Bulldogs deep into attack to half forward. But Simpson takes the mark. It's uh, Mother Callis. Spiro's kick. Up towards the youngster. Hickbot couldn't take it. The rebound goes to Footscray's Mansfield. Mansfield at left centre wing. Oh, it's a grubber. Up towards half forward. Taken away for Geelong by Simpson this time. Hickmott taps the ball over the boundary line in front of Matt Mansfield. And so we'll th uh, see a throw in. That might be the last uh, action we see in the opening term as the boundary umpire picks it up. But he won't even throw it in. And uh, Glenn Coleman didn't like that little bit of treatment. At quarter time, a 10-point advantage to Footscray. The Bulldogs leading 7-2, 44, Geelong 5-4, 34 in the qualifying. Major goal kicker on the ground, so on the ground is Bill Brownless. The man on screen with three, three ones, Tally. The second quarter of the 1992 qualifying final. Footscray leading by 10 points, 7-2 to 5-4. Another Ruckman getting an effective tap out. Liberatore, first kick at the second term. The Brownlow medalist puts it into space on centre wing. Miles leading in the race. Much travelled AFL footballer. Coleman looks for a hand pass, not really to the advantage of his side. Kellett, finally to Grant, who had an excellent first term. His marking was strong, disposal of excellent, up towards full forward or the full forward pocket. Malakalis can't quite control it. Good hip and shoulder by Simpson, but he missed his target who was Atkins and the ball over the boundary line right on 50. Simon Atkins a pretty good first quarter. Geelong can contain him. They'll be well on their way to victory. Some boundary throw in. It's all Footscray at the fall of the ball. Brian Royal centering kick by the veteran. Oh that's a mark. Front position. By Doug Hawkins. I was just about to mention he's moved back to the customary full forward positions there in tandem with Del Rey. That last last part of the second, first quarter, I should say, he was as a loose man in defence, leaving Wills loose man in defence for Geelong. Now Wills, the player, coming over the top there to spoil, but 
Hawkins on the second grab in front did it very well. He's a great player, isn't he? Oh. 32 years of age, been a champion for Footscray. The Footscray's eighth goal and his second. He steals it through for four points. Hawkins, the first Footscray player today to get more than one goal. The Bulldogs eighth and a great start in the second quarter. Eight goals, two to five goals, four. There's we heard the boys mention uh, Scotty particularly on the boundary line about the persistence of Footscray and the, their doggedness to get up and tackle and just have a go. And that's what will keep them in this game and this player is critical for them to win the match. So Hawkins with two goals, the leading goal kicker for the Bulldogs. Brownless has kicked three. Barnes has done fantastic at the centre bounces. And Footscray holding up quite nicely. Kellett, very quick Nigel Kellett, kicks Footscray up towards half forward. No mark taken. Delray leaves it for McPherson. McPherson up towards full forward. Knocked away by Wills from Hawkins. Over for a boundary throw in in the right forward pocket for Footscray. Great effort there from Brian Raw to run back with a fly of the ball into the no man's land. Contest a mark. Quick look at the Footscray bench with uh, Corcoran and Colinuk. Ball at the back. Gary Hocking. Handley in trouble. Hand pass over the top. Not much talking there between the two Geelong players, Wills and McGrath. Ball free. Hinkley off the ground. Atkins attempts to get it clear to Kellett. Robert Scott in there. Leaves it behind. Kellett. Now it's hatched out the back. Couch is a chance. Scott will take it away. Great umpiring there to let that play go. The kick to half forward. No mark taken. Punched away from Stoneham. Steve Wallace away to Baxter. Baxter's kick across his body has been marked by Atkins. Play on. Long ball, Delray, good use of the money in the mark. Look at on behind the play after the kick. It is um, an interesting, sorry, but Delray, as I said, good use of the body, Ross, wasn't it the fine mark? Right? Oh, yes, but uh, the name of the game is football. You get the ball and kick it. Try and get the ball down to your forward line as quickly as possible. And that kick from Atkins, having been set up across half back, was just perfect. Well, Atkins, a long bomb in the first quarter, resulted in a mark by Chris Grant. Delray, point blank range, kicks and goals. So Footscray go further ahead in the qualifying final. 9-2 to 5-4. Yes, and the challenge is fairly and squarely on Geelong at the moment. Footscray leading the way, it's their pace that's breaking this game up again. But then again, the onus was put onto Robert Scott at quarter time by Malcolm Blight to lift, give them something around the ground, and it's his sort of pace it's required by Geelong to get them back in this game. Well, Footscray, they've kicked seven goals straight, Ross. It's a top effort by an inexperienced team in the final. No question, Robert. 9-2 to 5-4. Barnes doing well in the ruck contest. Now Couch. Back he goes to Barnes. Geelong will have to get the next goal. Even though it's only about 20 points of difference. A great mark taken at the back by Credi Hughes, not paid. Still Geelong a chance. Stoneham. Knocked away a guy credit. He went after it very nicely. Just kicked away from Scott. In comes Hickmott. Handball. Gary Hocking not going hard enough. There. Credit takes it away. Back in towards the centre. Coleman kicks it quickly. High and a wobbly punt kick. Delray! Oh, look at the man in the goal square. No, Danny Delray may have a shot. Yes, it would have been awkward to get the ball on quickly, Robbo, but he just wasn't balanced enough and couldn't get the ball over the man on the mark particularly, so it could have been touched or smothered. So better off when you're in range like that and you are the full forward, you have a shot. Well, he's been a uh, fairly productive forward for Footscray right throughout the season. And he has a chance to post his third goal and we've still got 20 minutes left in the first half. Lovely kick, Del Rey. Three goals to Danny Del Rey. And Footscray taking all before them. 10-2, Geelong a 5-4. Yes, and that's his 60th goal for the season. Good use of the body. And again, we saw the quick long kick into the forward line, the most effective. But also some great scrambling work off half back from some of those Footscray players. Just forcing the ball forward with body and foot. And all of a sudden, you finish up with a goal. Delray joins Billy Brownless with three goals here this afternoon. But it's one-way traffic at the moment. Adler, gee, he's been quiet so far. Stoneham, they need more from him as well. Riccardi chips it in short, but still inside the centre square. The Cats have got to get the next goal. 
And as the sun comes out, maybe that'll lift their spirits. They certainly need it. Atkins, G, nearly a throw. Good tackle. Views. Brushes one. Can't get around uh, McPherson. Wallace lays it off well. Stanfield at right half back. Oh, man on his own is uh, Justin Charles, who's played pretty well here today. Delray and McGrath. McGrath drops it like a hot spot. Holding the ball. Well, he had it for half an hour. Gee, Footscray really fired up. 50 metres. There's the umpire saying he was chipped. Trying to get back at that shot. So Delray, who's kicked three, and as Ross mentioned, 60 now for the year, has a chance to make it four and 61. This is the reverse angle. Goes to the mark. McGrath then. Good Great tackle. tackle. Yeah. Good tackle. So Delray. Might be two goals in a minute and a half. Shouldn't miss from there. He hasn't. Four. So Footscray bowling away. Early days yet, but the sign's not good for Geelong. 11 2 to 5 4. Yes, and whilst it is only early days, uh, Pete, Rob and I were saying uh, on route to the game today that it could be a very tight game or one side could really break away. And at the moment, as I said, to qualify that, there's two and a half quarters to go. Which Gray soon look like the side most capable of doing it. Well, they've kicked three goals in four minutes, Ross, yes. and uh, they kicked seven in the first quarter. They've kicked four already in this second term with 19 minutes left. What appeals to me is that they've just been taking the ball away from the centre, yes. although Barnes has been good with his tap outs. They haven't been all that effective to Geelong players. That's right, but it's been the preparedness of the Footscray blokes put their body in, they've just taken toll of that. Steve Hocking looking a little disconsolate on the bench he suffered a heavy knock in the first term and we believe it's a shoulder injury and he may not take any further part in the game terrific hand pass Ablett what can the magician do what a kick by Gary Ablett well if they need a spark I'm sure they'll be looking at that man there number five Terry Wheeler Yes, and it is, you're right, Robert, he's a bloke who can spark them, and he also is a player who's going to be used correctly today because his fitness would be down. He's a player who does lack that stamina, so used in short bursts through the centre is possibly the right way to do it. Five possessions to Gary Ablett at his first goal. Three kicks and two hand passes only. 28 points the difference. Back into the centre. Stoneham maybe having a run on the ball. Baxter, good tackle by Hocking. Nothing for it from the umpire must have been perilously close. The other umpire was actually running back towards the goal. Maybe he thought it was going to be a free kick. Charles sets himself. It's going to be Stoneham that leaps. Nobody gets it. Back to that man. Ablett's kick marked by Bernard Tui. Former teammates, of course. Steve Wallace at right half back. Darren Baxter. Plenty of options downfield. That Shot wasn't a good kick, kick yes. The, the options were further down. Views over the top. Baxter again. Right on the boundary line. Stoner marks. Two poor kicks there. And the pressure is on. Footscray have thrown down the challenge. They lead by 28 points. Stoner's kick. Stanfield gets underneath. Hickmott late on the scene. Steve Wallace, the last to get up with the football. Quick hand pass. Is taken by uh, Mansfield. Super. Oh. Steve McPherson. Oh. Delray. Grant. McGrath. Tackled him shortly when he didn't have it. And the umpire says throw it in. Ross? It is, is it? I just think the tackle forced the ball free. In that case, it's, it's play, play on. on. That's exactly right. Yeah. If the ball spills free from the tackle, this is the uh, stain of hip and shoulder. Nothing wrong with that. And this is... Uh, Libertore looks for Atkins. Unfortunately, the hand pass had a little bit too much smoke on it, and it's out of bounds. We'll see a throw in. Saw Steve McPherson go down from a uh, heavy bump from Barry Stoneham. And the Footscray interchange bench. Charles working hard. That could be a free kick again. McPherson, no. <laughs> well, what, why is that not in the back? Well, one wonders whether Hinkley may have been going to ground before the tackle was applied, and uh, I think in that case, the umpire 
requests the players to move the ball on. Lipitore nearly held around the neck. And that is the way the umpire sees it. And the mighty midget, Tony Liberatore, has the football at right half forward. Kick in short, Baxter's mark. Within 50 metres, but he'll have to kick from outside. The player standing on the mark is about 48 metres. So it'll take a good kick for Darren Baxter to score. On the run, he gets good distances. Let's see what he can do from the, uh, a set shot. Nice kick. It'll be close. Don't think it's been touched, has it? It's offline anyway. Through for a behind for Footscray. So that uh, ruins their good run of straight kicking. They'd kick seven, seven straight before that. McGrath kicks it to himself and then runs about 15 metres, thumps it out towards the wing. Coleman, dispossessed. Steve Wallace, Liberatore, always works very hard for his side. He's kicking short. Will showed lots of courage. Hickley comes away with the football. Hickley bouncing twice, then kicks it long in towards a vacant half forward area. The ball bounces and bounces clear of the players. First to get back was Stanfield. Away to Reynolds. Reynolds kick. Fairly intelligent. Along the ground, but it found Hawkins. Hawkins, skillfully, Grant can't mark. Miles. Now Kellett for Footscray. Mansfield leaves it behind. Free kick off the football, and it will go to Kellett for being held when he didn't have the football. Nigel Kevin at left centre wing. We actually had 13 goals kicked without a behind being registered in total by both teams. Kevin gives the Bulldogs a chance maybe to score another one. Up towards half forward. Can McPherson do that? And loads with a hand pass. Atkins, the ball bounces not too kindly for him. Goes better for Stoneham. Royal gives chase. The kick goes to the outer side. And the race for the football is going to be won by, well, the ball itself. No man's territory. Tui was nearest. It'll be a throw-in. The problem Melbourne Blight has got is that he's taken Barry Stone away from centre-half forward to centre-half back. He's got Barnes to centre-half forward. Handley on the ball. That just lacks a quality player at that target area at centre-half forward. Charles to Scott was the play. Couch applies a tackle. Atkins goes down. He was taken high. Nothing for it. Fires away a good hand pass. Over to Tui, Tui to Coleman, kicks around his body, not a well-directed kick. And Stodham, as Ross mentioned, down there takes the mark. Hickmott, a couple of grabs, couldn't take it. Scott, good tackle, pretty good. He nearly throws the ball away. Hinkley, Couch. Can Geelong make something of this? Scott, Victorian representative, long kick. Brownless, mark or goal? It's a mark taken by Brown. This was kicked 3-1. He took the grab in the first quarter right on the line and then toe poked it through for a goal. Not this time. We have to go back to kick. Awkward one. Brown this kicks. And goals. So Brown this joins Danny Delray with four goals as the leading contributors. 7-4 plays 11-3. Yes, well, Robert Scott took a risk there on that boundary line to back his pace. It was a good tackle by Credit Hook, but they got away with it. They're prepared to just keep running. Their persistence in doing that, particularly Scott there, pays dividends. Brownless did the right thing by going for the mark. He couldn't be too sure whether it was going to go through. So full forwards will have to do that, Robert. <laughs> Brownless has now kicked four. Del Rey four for Footscray. Stoneham beaten for it by Charles. Liberatore tackled. Mansfield in the back. Nearly, yes, it is being paid. And Liberatore will take the kick for Footscray just near the centre circle. Liberatore, five kicks and four hand passes. Good kick to Royal. It's getting too much space. Yes. Well, their forward setup is very good. They've had it uh, like that for the whole season. Very few changes. So they, they know what their set plays are, Rob, and they know how each other moves. And the players downfield can read them far easier. Well, Brian Royal has kicked one. And I would think he'd nearly get the distance from here. Loves kicking goals. Oh, good kick again. Second goal for Brian Royal. And Footscray 12-3, lead Geelong 7-4. Yes, and all the Footscray senior players are leading from the front. Liberatore, Hawkins, Royal, 
Just doing the right thing there. Malakellis getting caught well out of ground. And a lovely finish there from Royal. Another good kick by Brian Royal to register his second goal. The bounce back in the centre. Footscray lead by 29 points. Stoneham takes it out of the centre. Pretty ordinary kick by Barry Stoneham's standards. Barnes tries to help it on for Ablett. In there with the football underneath him is Tony Liberatore. And he'll get some pats of encouragement from his teammates. The umpire will bounce 50 metres from the Geelong goal with just under 12 minutes left in the second term. Cats with the job ahead of them. Footscray the underdogs. Knocked down by Barnes. Hawkins with plenty of time and probably should have done better. Wallace got a mid to it, I think, before it went out of bounds. Close to out of bounds on the full. And so the veteran of nearly 200 games trots back to his post to await the throw in. Hawkins now playing spare man in defence again, which leaves Wills free across half back for Geelong. Stanfield and Barnes. One by Stanfield. Barnes, a quick kick out of the pack. Gee, that's not a bad effort. He might have registered a goal. He has! Great effort by John Barnes as his teammates run in to congratulate him. And that's just what Geelong needed. Barnes getting his first and the Cats eighth. They trailed by 23 points. I don't have him in their best at this stage. Barnes has been pretty well, good. Well, as you mentioned, he uh, sent a bounce particularly for him winning the tap. His teammates haven't taken full toll of it. Here he just gets the recovery going. Merriman in there working hard. Mansfield, I should say. And that's a great snap from a big fellow. So the Cats hang in. 23 points the difference. 11 minutes left in the half. Stone him up in ruck. One by Footscray. Libra Torre. The Terrier Brownlow medalist. Oh, excellent football. Delray marks a chance to kick number five. And again, the Bulldogs can register the quickest of replies. So Danny Delray with four straight against his name today. Look at this perfect play, Ross. Yes, he's uh, not often had to use the right side of his body, but he did that very well. What about the roving in the oh, centre? Was wasn't perfect. It? perfect. So Danny Delray. Inside 50, kicks for number five and gets number five. Can the Bulldogs be stopped? 13 381. Magnificent kicking Geelong, 8 4 52. Yes, and full marks not only to Liberatore and Charles in working the ball through the centre to watch this play. Barnes who actually takes it, but Liberatore just steals it, read it beautifully. And four goals in a quarter in any standard of footy is a great effort. And Delray doing very, very well. Well, Liberatore was quick to get back to give Justin Charles a bit of encouragement there for his ruck work, so... He obviously thought it was terrific effort by the young man. Gary Hocking up towards half forward. That could nearly be paid there to Hickmott. It is. And he plays on quickly. Kicks it across to centre half forward. The mark is taken by Scott. No players loose at all. So Scott will have to perhaps bomb away. The kick slips off the side of his boot. Hawkins in front. Well done, Dougie Hawkins. He takes the mark and gives Billy Brownless a bit of good old-fashioned Western Oval lip <laughs> between back pocket and half-back flank. Hawkins has the football. 13-3 to 8-4. Nine and a half minutes left. Coleman beaten for it by Handley. Handley gets his kick away and it lands. How the runner got out of the road there, I'll never know. But Ablett has marked about 46 metres from goal. It's a critical kick, Robbo, isn't it? My word. Like the last one he had a shot with. He hooks this. What good distance. It might be still in. It is. And away go Footscray through Mansfield. His kick goes to a vacant area out near the wing. The ball bouncing a little awkwardly. Riccardi's a chance, but Crediuk and McPherson combine with Wallace. Back to Crediuk and Footscray out of trouble. Crediuk just a fraction slow, but got his kick away. But it was able to be thumped away from Charles by Stoneham. The boundary throw will take place at right half forward for Footscray. About two kicks from their goal. There's the score, 13-3 to 8-4. And Footscray hanging on to a 29-point advantage with just eight and three-quarter minutes left in the second quarter. Boundary throw in. Stoneham down to Wills. 
We started on the interchange bench. Out it comes to Scott from uh, his teammate Riccardi. Stone him again. Kicks up towards the centre square. Marking contest. None can bring it down. Barnes tries off the ground. Missed it. Stanfield's in there for Footscray. And he's shuffled out the front of the pack by Simpson. Riccardi over the top. Looping hand pass. Views right on the boundary line. Good centering kick. Excellent play of Hocking can mark and he can. Gets dumped by Tui. And you would ask the question, possibly 50 metres, but the umpire says no. And that was just a perfect kick. He just knew that he had to centre the ball and he just did it deftly. And it's going to could very well result in a goal. And he did get dumped. Tui looks at the umpire. Nothing for it. Badly needed one for Geelong. If he can get it, Goal umpire has a good look, looks okay, says yes, sir. So plenty of goals coming at the MCG. Gary Hocking puts through his first. He's kicked 1-1 one, one out of Geelong's tally of 9-4. Yes, and we did a quarter time a bit of a look at uh, Gary Hocking's stacks. He had four and two. He's now got six and three, so he just needs to pick his running up a bit. But that was certainly ideal that they wanted from their Ruck Rover. Nine possessions to Gary Hocking. He's kicked one goal, one. 58 plays 81. Again, 23 points the difference. Footscray have been able to get the quick reply. Hocking out of the centre. Might be a long free kick. Should have been to Riccardi. Gee, they all, a few of them stopped and looked back. Charles doesn't. Gets dispossessed pretty quickly. Footscray had the numbers. Baxter dragged off it. Hocking gets rid of it quickly. Scott, deft hand pass. On it goes to Riccardi. What a badly directed kick, Wallace, Liberatore, Footscray again, the numbers at the ball. He kicks to midfield, strong grab by Grant, marks in front of Miles, and Footscray killing them down midfield. Tui from inside the square, unloads with a long bomb, Delray at the back, box. Push in the back. Oh, gee. Peter, as soon as he took the mark, I was looking to see where the umpires were. Likewise. Because we could see it. He was a fair way away, but he, uh, he spotted it. Yes, he just wasn't subtle enough. <laughs> Spoken by former full forward. But that, that bit there, but it's just the last push out, McGrath, front posse. So the kick comes back towards the 50 metre line, Hocking again takes the mark. And this is what the Cats have got to do, I feel. Play on a little bit more. Gary Hocking not missing around, to stone him. Up to half forward. They must win this. It's a critical possession here at half forward. Tui over the top has been penalised, and he's not... Oh! Very generous umpire. Ross, 50. My oh, golly. Ablett takes the hand pass and with the left foot, look at this kick. Oh, he's a magician. Ablett second. I didn't need 50. What a kick, Ross, off the left foot. Well, it's that sort of spark you need, it's that class. We watch here, different free kick here. All over. Manfield was Tui. I know we're not supposed to say anything, but... Back to the centre. The Footscray runner coming out to Bernard Tui. Obviously, the message from Terry Wheeler was to cool it. Geelong swing into attack again. Riccardi's kick to the forward pocket, and Brownless takes the mark. Then the Cats come back. Magnificent a tough kick. kick by Adlett before for his second. This will be a tough one. Brownless has kicked four. Delray has five for Footscray. Distance shouldn't be a problem. On the right side for a right footer. But he's kicked it right across goal. Might be a behind. Yes, it is. So Brownless brings his tally to four goals, two for the afternoon. And Terry Weaver looks on interestedly. A few frowns in the Geelong box. 65 to 81. Keenan Reynolds to kick in. Tui makes the lead. It's Hawkins from back pocket right. Coleman in front and takes the mark. Plays on. Stone him behind. Can't stop Charles. And the ball beats him out of bounds. Throw in close to centre wing on the outer side. First MCG final in front of this magnificent southern stand. Where is Stoneham playing now? Centre half back? Centre half back, yes. Has been for most of the quarter, Robbo. 
Stoneham will do the ruck work against Justin Charles and wins it. Knocks it down to Buse, well shepherded. Buse along the boundary line with the kick. And a good mark was taken by the youngster Adrian Hickmott. Horsham Lad kicks to half forward. Mansfield, good mark. A good shepherding from Ablett to keep two out of the contest. Two. He had a run at it. Ablett kept him out of the way. Ablett, or Brownless it was, got underneath it. And the ball just cut it over the boundary line by Handley. Yes, it is, finally. In front of Bernard Tui. So a throw in, 45 metres from goal. Bad option there by Mansfield. Yeah, Maybe too just deep. going too deep. Yes, I would. Well, Barnes if he had a second look at it, he would have gone straight towards the goal square. Well, Barnes, big leap over the top. Gets it back to Couch. On to Ablett. Can he make it number three? Superman's kick is high, wide, not too handsome. Pretty hook with the big fist. And it goes through for the first rush behind of the afternoon to Geelong. If you're going to spoil a ball, that's how you do it. Very important four and a half minutes for Footscray. 13-3 to 10-6. Reynolds. Just a little indecisive. Now he elects to come to the members' side. Good kick too, well outside 50 metres. And Crediute being held there by Robert Scott. So Crediute will take the free kick for Footscray. Plays on now, kicks it in the Coleman direction. And a good mark. Gee, he's done well, Coleman. Kick into the centre, Liberatore on his own. Plays on quickly. Short kick, too high. Grant uses the body. Going to be taken away though, the Geelong defenders. Simpson still has the football in play. He's got half an hour to sum it up and then kicks it out towards the half-back flank region where Gary Hocking, and he's playing on. Couch. Oh, it's a mistake here. Rules is caught. Handball away. Couch. They're going to get out of trouble. With sheer persistence, Gary Hocking in towards centre forward. Mansfield sets himself and takes a wonderful mark. They he's got great got hands. They should not get out of trouble down here, but they did because they kept running and did the instinctive thing. Well played. Mansfield. Neat looking left footer. There's a free kick to Geelong. No question about that. Tony Campbell having an off day. Brownless has kicked four. Four two. See there again, Campbell's watching Brownless before the ball comes down. So he's already up off key before he starts his run and then just infringes poorly. Not much doubt about the distance, and no doubt about Billy's fifth goal. Five goals to Brownless, two goals to Gary Ablett, and they were just sensational goals by Gary Ablett. And for Footscray, Del Reyes kicked five, two each to Hawkins and Royal. Yes, and he had definite free kick here, and you just sense that Geelong are prepared to take this game by the scruff of the neck. Footscray had it that way earlier on. And Geelong showing the quality they've shown all season. Just coming back. And their forwards just getting on top. Under three minutes left in the first half. Billy Brownless has kicked five goals, two. Geelong's tally 11-6. 72 plays, 81. The Cats have literally clawed their way back into this. Stoneham up high. Simpson runs into trouble. Gets out of trouble again. Left foot out towards half forward. Krediok a good spoil. He might have almost been into the back of his opponent out there. Hickmott applies a tackle. Scott off the ground. Doesn't go to the club's advantage though, but they back up well. And still they're in there. Stanfield. A quick kick. Almost panic stations from Footscray now. Geelong answering the challenge. The Bradley Midless couch draws it back up towards half forward. Mark. Darren Baxter in the road over Ablett. Baxter from the centre half back position is allowed to play on straight down the ground as they've been doing all oh, that grab a magnificent grab. Atkins will have to be quick, son, not quick enough. A great tackle applied down there by Couch. Atkins, oh, what was that? A kick. <laughs> Charles, the statistician, put it down. Good on him. Miles gets it out to Riccardi. Now towards centre wing position. Is that a mark to Critio? No, says the umpire. McPherson, super to Baxter. He'll get it back again. McPherson's kicked a half forward. Marking contest, Delray almost. McGrath over the top of him. Atkins, a wild hand pass. Will's taken high. And he'll take the free kick. Oh, Danny Delray, you are very stiff. That's twice he says. I think that's what he <laughs> means by that, doesn't he? I, think so. I hope so. So Will's takes the free at half back. I think Andrew Will's was uh, 
thought he would be hemmed in there. Hickbot, Scott tackled well by Mansfield. And the umpire decides on a bounce on centre wing. One minute 14 left in the half. Geelong supporters getting a little excited, and so they should. Their team, they trailed by close to five goals at one stage in this second term, and they now are just in arrears by nine points. Krediuk, that's too high on Wallace by Riccardi, and Steve Wallace will take the free kick, much to the delight of the Footscray fans. 14 free kicks to Footscray, 13 to Geelong, and Steve Wallace kicks it in towards half forward. Simpson in front of the pack, bumped off the football by Charles. Geelong at the base there, Couch, Atkins, gets the handball away, Baxter from 50 metres, Darren Baxter goes long and kicks inaccurately through for one behind. And that's their first score, Robbo, since the 18 and a half minute mark of the quarter. 72 plays 82, 10 points the difference, which is what it was incidentally at quarter time. So it looks like being that way at half time too, as the clock ticks down, or it will when the ball is kicked back in by McGrath. 22 seconds left. So we have uh, time for another score. Baxter, the umpire, has he played the mark? Yes, he has. And that chance will go to Footscray. So Geelong won't add to its tally. 13 seconds left. It ticks down. They must take a mark. McGrath, late. Push in the back. Yes, Delray. I wonder what he'll say to the umpire now. Well, he'll say thanks because it's 50 metres. So Delray should get goal number six. As the siren will sound, he'll be right on the line. Yes, McGrath's momentum didn't allow him to stop uh, in time. He knew he'd conceded too much ground to Del Rey and in trying to make up that ground, going too quickly, couldn't stop himself from crashing in the back of Del Rey. Goal number six to the hyphen. As the siren goes for half time, and that will mean that the difference is 16 points. Malcolm Blight makes his way down. A good fight back by the Cats, just nullified by that final kick. 14 4 to 11 6. No, it's 14 points the difference. Is it my mistake? No, 16. 16. 72 to 88. And what a great light. Well, it has been. And uh, oh, you wonder, Ross, don't you? The umpires cop a bit of a bait. Uh, sometimes decisions can be critical in a game of footy where a goal is scored from something like that. Yes, and the unfortunate part, too, Ian, from the umpires' point of view, if they make a couple of really bad ones, they tend to linger in everyone's mind. But overall, I think they've done a pretty good job. So 11 6 Geelong, trailing Footscray 14 4 88 at the MCG.